Yo, what's happening guys? King GBL here, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Level 1 to Legend. This is the series in which we take a Level 1 account in Pokemon Go, and try to hit Legend within one season. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing my fantastic Ron 2 veteran. I started this account 20 days ago, with zero Pokemon. This account is completely free to play, no trading, and we're not playing the game excessively. Every single Pokemon that I'm using, every single candy, it's all been gotten within the last 20 days, and it's all completely free to play. So if you're a fairly new player to Pokemon Go, one of the things that is very difficult about this game is gathering resources and trying to invest into Pokemon for PvP, as well as trying to build your overall account, building a Pokemon for raiding and so on. I decided to make this series because I wanted to see like how difficult really is it for new players currently. If I'm a new player with some PvP skills, am I able to build up my account quickly enough to hit a uh, Legend within the first season or get to Veteran easily enough? What kind of resources are available to new players? And I have to say overall it's been very difficult. On the first week that I started this account, I was able to get a leafy on from research, I was able to get a single move Miltank from a daily adventure incense, and I was able to catch a Wooloo in the wild, which I eventually got candies for to build a dub wall. I finally had enough Pokemon to play Great League, and as soon as I was in Great League, having a little bit of success in climbing through the early ranks, we had the League Rotations and we had Sunshine Cop, I think alongside Ultra League perhaps. Sunshine Cop was a cop that has Pokemon which are pretty inaccessible for new players. We had things like Macargo, Talonflame, and a lot of Pokemon that required you to basically be an older player, right? I think Flygon was top meta in that cop as well. Even Pokemon like Abomasnow, which is currently in Team Rocket Grunts, but is basically impossible to get candies for. I think for a newer player, it is quite difficult to get these Pokemon. I found the Sunshine Cup to be fairly okay. I found a team that somewhat worked, and I was able to get through the early ranks. Then last week, we were stuck with probably the worst meta of all time, and the Little Cup and Master League week. I found it extremely difficult. After getting out of the Sunshine Cup and playing a little bit of Little Cup, I was able to get myself all the way up to 2200 ELO. I was using a team of Claude's arm, and it was going fairly decently for me. However, after a couple of days, every single team I started facing had Marl and Shuckle on it, and I think all of the people who didn't want to use those Pokemon basically stopped playing the Little Cup, and it was just the Marl and Shuckle Cup for that entire week. I think if I was a game developer, I would not want people to experience that type of thing as a new player, getting absolutely spammed into oblivion by level 50 Pokemon, which are 400 or 500 CP. That week was absolutely crazy. However, this week started the Halloween event. We were able to get some decent Pokemon spawning in the wild. We got this Drift Bloom, which was spawning in the wild. Of course, we were able to get the Golurk candies for research, but finding those research tasks to evolve three ghost Pokemon to get a 50 50 chance to get a Golit, extremely difficult. I found that even the Halloween event, while it has a couple of good Pokemon like Ariados, um, the Pokemon you're seeing on screen here, Drift Bloom, as I mentioned, and if y'all are decent ghost types, even then, I think this week has been pretty good for me to build my account, but it still feels like, as a newer player in Pokemon Go, it is quite difficult to gather resources. The one thing that's been amazing this week is Double Catch Candy. I think if Pokemon Go is to become accessible for people, and for people to really get interested and hop in and play this game, I think there needs to be a very clear pathway on how you can get a team together for PvP very, very quickly. Even if it's a research, right? Sometimes we have researches during Go Battle Weeks, where people will get, like, the World Championship team, I think last time it was like Umbreon or Altaria, all that kind of stuff. I think for this game, there needs to be more researches directed towards new PvP players. Whenever you first hop into Go Battle League, you get a research, and within that research, you can unlock, I don't know, a 1400 CP Wigglytuff, a 1400 CP Claude's Arm, a 1400 CP, you know, even 1500, right? I'm, I'm not being very generous here. I'm just assuming that Niantic won't be generous, but let's say that, right? I think it would be incredible if they just give us a research with five or six different uh, Pokemon, which are immediately ready for GBL. You don't have to give them two moves, right? Give us one move on the Pokemon. Uh, give them the correct move, if possible, that would be great. Um, the TM system, also for a new player, is quite difficult to navigate. Um, there's not really that many great ways to get TMs in this game, unless you have research tasks which you're actively completing all the time, or of course raiding. So what I think would be really amazing for new players in this game, is basically like a GBL starter kit, and I think it would be great if they updated it every season, right? Imagine if players were able to hop into Go Battle League for the first time this season, they get basically a booster pack for GBL, and get some of the meta-relevant Pokemon for free, just to basically get people on their way, and get people into PvP. Anyway guys, despite all the challenges, I was able to come through it all. We hit Veteran today, and I'm super, super happy with it. The one thing that I'm a little bit unsure about, as a content creator, I want to make this series as interesting as possible. I don't necessarily know if I want to spam the same team over and over again. I think if you're a new player, this is exactly what you should be doing. You find a team that's working, you stick to it like glue until it doesn't work. That's exactly what you should do. 
However, as a content creator, I'm a little bit different. Um, I don't want to necessarily showcase the same team over and over and over again because I showcased it today. I'm showcasing it again. I gained 200 ELO with it. Uh, from 2500 back up to almost expert on my main account. I, I don't want to showcase it over and over and over again, but this team is so good and I do want to show my progress on this account. So you guys can uh, let me know your comments and opinions in the comment section down below. Of course, if you know, while you're down there, while you're in the area, go on ahead, touch that like button once or three times or five times, tap the subscribe button once, thrice or five times and uh, just do it once, right? Once is fine. But anyway, folks, let's hop into the battles here. We've got Big Daddy Gulurk, an amazing investment, definitely. Um, I'm on single move, right? The opponent assumes I'm going to Dynamic Punch. They do end up letting that second move go. I would have been able to get the Dynamic Punch off, and the opponent ends up Brave Birding me here. Um, I end up, like, kind of making a mistake in this match. I think I end up losing this one because I didn't shield the Brave Bird, right? Although, it would have overwhelmed me anyway, so, like, I might have been in trouble either way here. Um, but maybe just shielding the Brave Bird was better. I just assumed there wouldn't be ABA weak to charm, but in this cup I have actually found that quite a lot. In this cup there are many teams that are ABA weak to charm, so it's not actually as straightforward choice as you would think it is. You would think, okay, weak to charm in the lead, they've got an answer in the back. Sometimes you need to shield your Wigglytuff, they're just ABA. Wigglytuff, or sorry, um, Azumarill here, is kind of a tricky Pokemon for the team. I don't always win against Azu leads, so I'm deciding to test out something different. Take the move on Wiggly, and then swap out and shield the Ice Beam. By that point you'll have 5 Astonishes and that'll allow you to basically just get off a bunch of energy and something. So they come into the Umbreon here. The uh, clock is super misaligned because the opponent decided to stay in. And we do get this debuff quite a lot. And by the time we farm this the whole way down with Wigglytuff, um, we can actually even just swap out here at this point because of course, like I said, the opponent set into chip, right? So uh, 50 second switch timer misaligned. The opponent actually comes into a Drapion. So this is a very tricky one. Um, we do have uh, Golurk in the back, which will just slap us into Oblivion. But they got an energy lead, they will get off a move here. Hopefully not two, if they get off two, oh, I think we just lose now, unfortunately. I think this might have been the bad set. Um, it took me three sets today to get to uh, this elo. Overall, went super positive again today. Um, I think I had two four ones after the fact. So actually, guys, I think I'm in the 2600s with this team now. Once again, guys, let me know your opinions. Should it be a part of the challenge where I'm not allowed to spam the same team over and over again? I do need your feedback on that in the comments down below. We go 2-3, and hopping into the next set, we get a Claude Sour lead. I don't mind Claude Sour lead too much, and um, we get the Greninja on the swap here. And what you're about to witness here about this swap is kind of crazy. If this is the one I think it is, this is insane. We land the Icy Wind right, we take the first Night Slash, which is debuffed. I just continue farming and farming. So it's 3 for the first Night Slash, 2 for the second one, 2 for the third one, and I think it's 4 for the fourth one. You guys can correct me, or sorry, it's 3 for the fourth one. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but we actually just land an Icy Wind and farm it the whole way down, and then get two two more Icy Winds off on the Malamar. So by the time Malamar sees Wigglytuff, it's almost dead. I come straight into Golurk, the opponent comes into Claude's arm, and we're going to get off a Shadow Punch here. I shouldn't really be throwing this move, I should just commit to a massive farm down on the entire team. And um, we do have a move here, I'm pretty sure, Earthquake coming in. I do have fairly decent IVs on the Golurk, which is definitely helping quite a lot. This is actually getting kind of close. Going for that move might have actually cost me this match here. We do farm it the whole way down before they get off another move, and that's that's super, super lucky right there. I misplayed slightly, but thankfully we could still win that one. Sometimes you have to recognise when do you need to throw moves, and when do you need to commit to fast move pressure. The opponent comes into Wigglytuff, speaking of fast move pressure. They throw the swift right away. I decide to shield the first move, I'm going to get off an Icy Wind, and I'm going to try to force a uh, switch advantage here with the Wiggly, because I can get my Drift Bloom on their uh, Golark. I'm hoping to farm it down the whole way. Unfortunately I can't, so I decide, okay, we'll just take one move here, we're in the 1-1 one one shield, the opponent cannot come into Golurk again. And if my Golurk ends up on their Golurk, that's perfectly fine. The opponent comes into a Drift Blim, or sorry, what am I talking about? A Whimsicott on my Drift Blim. They go for a Seed Bomb Bait, which is super unfortunate. I definitely could consider calling that, uh, but it will probably knock me out, so makes sense. I anticipated the opponent to swap out there, they did not. They go for the Moon Blast here, and then they come back into the Golurk. However, we're super close to the move. We get off the Icy Wind, bang, this will look to take them out. And does the opponent reach a Moon Blast in time? I definitely messed up this game, I shouldn't have swapped out, um, that was definitely my mistake there, or at the very least I could have called a move. So you can see like, even if you're quite a new player, even somebody as experienced as myself still makes a lot of mistakes in this game. I myself make a lot of mistakes, especially if I'm streaming and talking to chat, or if I'm just sitting back and just kind of messing around, like watching a podcast or something while playing, which is basically what I was doing while I was playing these battles. I was definitely very locked in and focused, but that right there, just a lapse of concentration, it does happen, and in this next battle here, we have the Fortress Safe Swap. This thing is so awkward to deal with, dude. It is super awkward. I'm trying my absolute best to spam for it with Drift Bloom the best I possibly can. We go for the Shadow Ball, the opponent lets it go, and they come back into more Peko. 
We do have sort of two answers to this. We get off the Icy Wind, which is really nice, and I'm just sort of hoping I can sweep here. I decide to come into Golurk. I decide to take the first move. It's a Psychic Fang. It's a fantastic call by me there. They come into Azu. I can look to go for a Shadow Punch, which won't quite knock it out, but we'll get the opponent super low. I think at this point we just about make it to another Shadow Punch, and I accidentally close my app. <laughs> I absolutely hate iPhone sometimes. It's so annoying with that little swirly thing that the, the phone does. I'm always pulling my screen up and down. I have to look to see if there's a tutorial to fix that, because that's that's so annoying. That could have cost me the match. However, we are able to go for an Icy Wind. We can still win this one, and that's going to be good games. Hopping into the next battle, we have another tricky lead in Azu. The opponent comes into Claude's arm. I don't know why they swap straight out like that. They did not have to swap out there. I'm assuming it might be double poison, so I think that's probably why they swapped. Uh, we end up here just committing to the farm down, but the opponent only goes for a Sludge Bomb. It's 8 to the Earthquake, and it's 665, or 655, I think, for Sludge Bomb. So if they only build up to 6 or 7, it's a Sludge Bomb or a Stone Edge. Don't shield it. Only shield if they build up to 8. Um, if they throw an Earthquake the first time, it's 7 for the second one. So basically going for an Earthquake will make the second one one cheaper. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, as he goes for a Playroff here, I'm going to look to commit to the Farm Down, Charm Down. We charm it the whole way down. And yeah, the opponent's just seen enough there at that point. Uh, we definitely could have just debuffed whatever came in. And when you get your final Pokemon debuffed like that, it's just GG's most of the time. Hopping into the next battle, we have a fantastic lead in Greninja. The opponent swaps into Fortress. On the counter swap, this is amazing. The opponent only builds up to a Mirror Shot. I believe it's 5 to the Earthquake. I think it's 4 to the Rock Tomb. And I believe Mirror Shots are free too. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. They come back into Greninja. I threaten the Dynamic Punch here. <laughs> Thankfully, the opponent shields. And because I have so much energy, I can threaten another Dynamic Punch. The opponent shields again. We eventually get off a Shadow Punch. But you're going to see, Shadow Punch does significant damage to this thing. And will basically prevent them from getting to a two Hydro Cannon. So I think you just go triple Shadow Punch anyway. Because if they let the first one go, they're going to have to shield the second one. And if they're going to shield the second one, they're going to have to shield the third one. So no matter what, you're getting shields or knockout. It's basically a win-win. Whatever the opponent swaps into, just farm it the whole way down. Get off free moves, and you're basically chilling at that point. The opponent gets off a dying move. However, we will survive this no problem. and Well, not quite no problem, but we do survive. And guys, that is it. This is the set. We get a 4-1. We started off in 24-59. We get another more Peko. Big shout out to Niantic for making more Peko very, very common. Ironically, in a way, we get a Wigglytuff in the wild. Big thank you to everybody who's added me here. If you want to have a quick look at the account stats, we've walked 132 kilometers, caught almost 2,500 Pokemon. Um, we've walked 59 this week. This has been a really good week for walking for me. And I think I'd just go down here to show you that I've done no trading on the account. Um, these are the, the medals we've got. You know, I've done a decent amount of catching. Um, as you can see here, yeah, we've basically done zero trades. And we're going to claim the veteran set. You get all the way up to 2502. Like I said, guys, you know, whenever I started this series, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. But the support has been incredible. I want to say a big thank you. Really, really appreciate it, as Nornicle is trying to uh, invite me to a battle. We do unlock the mask. I think I need to change my avatar quite soon. I was basically trying to make it look as silly as possible for the uh, the thumbnail, but uh, we're going to get ourselves this mask. We're making very, very good progress, man. Like I said, big thank you for all the support. Really appreciate it. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy today's video, drop a like, subscribe. Of course, let me know your thoughts and opinions on uh, everything we talked about today. Nornicle, we're not battling right now. We're doing the one to legend video. But thanks everybody, very much appreciated. We're going to bank a set for tomorrow. And hopefully I'll see you guys then for a brand new video.